we're getting more perspective after a Virginia Beach man was arrested and charged with threatening to murder Congressman Scott Taylor. Wallace Godwin allegedly made the threats inside Taylor's office yesterday at Town Center. Robert Boyd has the story. Well, according to court documents, Wallace Godwin came to Scott Taylor's offices here in Town Center to speak with the congressman about marijuana laws. But Taylor was not here, so instead Godwin spoke with his staff, and at some point he got frustrated, and that's when he began making threats. On Friday, 69-year-old Wallace Godwin of Virginia Beach was charged with threatening to murder and assault Congressman Scott Taylor. According to an affidavit, Godwin told a staff member, Scott is having an event this Saturday. I'm going to get my shotgun and do something about this. I will just handle this myself. That's when Godwin allegedly pointed at two staffers in the room and said, you two are next. There should never be violence, never be threats of violence to elected officials or their staff. It's just unacceptable. I'm proud of the way that my office handled it. They immediately contacted the police. According to court documents, Taylor has had two previous incidents with Godwin. In one case, Godwin blocked his driveway. In another, he went to Taylor's office and yelled at staff members. Quite frankly, the political discourse in our country right now has, has risen to levels that are that are dangerous and I think that everyone just needs to calm down. 13 News Now went to Godwin's house on Bryan Lane and attempted to speak with his family. They refused to open the door before driving away. However, we did speak with neighbors. I've known them. I'm not friends with them. His wife is wonderful, but he's crazy. Rhonda Solomon has lived across the street from the Godwins for the past 15 years. This doesn't come as a surprise to you? No, not at all. I've heard horrible stories about him. Solomon says she had her own run in with Godwin a few years earlier after she told his teenage son to stop riding his dirt bike in the street. He came after me and tried to attack me in my yard once. What happened? My son stopped him. My older son stopped him. We met another neighbor who feels bad for Godwin. Marvin Hall says his neighbor was probably in need of serious mental help and unfortunately never got it. I'm not a doctor and I've never met him, so I don't know if he's got a mental illness or not. But I don't see people really acting that way without having some issue. It's also important to mention that Wallace Godwin does have a concealed weapons permit. Now, if convicted, he faces up to 10 years in prison. In Virginia Beach, Robert Boyd, 13 News Now. Godwin appeared in federal court today. His next court date is scheduled for Tuesday. We'll continue to follow this case and bring you the latest information as we get it. A Virginia Beach man who tried hiding drugs inside an adult novelty store has been sentenced. Judge ordered Russell Kerfoot to serve 15 years. Apparently, another man mailed the drugs to Kerfoot for him to distribute throughout Hampton Roads. Kerfoot was arrested in May of last year after Beach Police got a tip that Kerfoot was doing a drug deal at the Love Shack. Court documents show he hid nearly 60 grams of meth inside the ceiling of the store's bathroom. Officers found another 60 grams of meth in Kerfoot's car. Newport News police say they are looking for a qualified women and men to join their team, but they're trying to figure out why women aren't applying. We reached out to local police departments. You can see that in each department, there are more men than women officers. In Newport News, 353 men, but only 67 women. The department came up with a survey and they're asking women to take it. Questions include, what keeps you from choosing a career in law enforcement? Are you concerned for your safety? Are you comfortable using a weapon? I think they just put it out there more as um, like this is man's job, you know, like manly men are police officers. <laughs> the police department survey will be up for 30 days. Well, tonight, President Trump issued an order banning transgender persons from serving in the military, except under limited circumstances. The White House says people who require substantial medical treatment present considerable risk to military effectiveness. This has been an ongoing fight within the Trump administration. Last year, the president announced in a tweet that he would reverse a plan allowing transgender individuals to serve openly. Following several legal challenges, the Pentagon began allowing transgender recruits to seek enlistment starting in January. New information for you tonight about a fiery crash at Travis Air Force Base in California. The FBI is trying to figure out why a man drove a minivan that was on fire through the main gate. The van was full of propane tanks and gas cans. Authorities say there is no evidence here this was terrorism. The driver, a man who immigrated from India 25 years ago, died in the crash Wednesday night. The man had no links to terrorism, no connections to the base, and did not leave behind any clues about his actions. 
Only on 13 News Now, the annual Run for the Fallen is going coast to coast this year. In the past, the course is from Fort Story to Arlington National Cemetery. Each mile along the way, a fallen hero's name is spoken aloud and runners pay respects to Gold Star families. But this year's run will span 19 states, recognizing nearly 20,000 fallen service members who have died since the USS Cole attack in the year 200. 2000. For George Lutz, this became his life's mission after losing his own son in Iraq in 2005. Every parent in America would rather somebody else's kid died for their country besides their own. And I say to America, somebody else's kid is dying for your country so that yours doesn't have to. And what's the least that you can do? to say thank you. This year, the run for the fallen will go from April 7th through August 5th from Fort Irwin, California to Arlington National Cemetery. Today at the ocean front, there was a solemn salute to a fallen aviator. This is the missing man flyover formation. Aviators did it in memory of an Oceana based aviator killed in a jet crash in Florida last week. Lieutenant Commander James Johnson and Lieutenant Caleb King were part of Squadron 213. Today's flyover followed a service for Johnson. Services for King are planned for tomorrow in Florida. As people prepare for March for Our Lives events across the country, tonight a school superintendent in Pennsylvania has come up with a unique idea to protect his students and staff. He's putting big buckets of rocks in each classroom. Reporter Peggy Lee explains. Every classroom has been equipped with a five gallon bucket full of river stone. If an armed intruder attempts to gain ad entrance to any of our classrooms, they will face a classroom full of students armed with rocks, and they will be stoned. That was Dr. David Helsel testifying to the House Education Committee last week in Harrisburg. The superintendent of the Blue Mountain School District was explaining his unconventional form of protecting the students in their schools in the event of an active shooter situation. Give them rocks. At one time, I just had the idea of Riverstone. They're the right size for hands. You can throw them very hard, and they will, uh, they will create or cause pain, which can distract. Helsel says teachers, staff, and students were given active shooter training through a program known as ALICE, which stands for Alert, Lockdown, Inform, Counter, Evacuate, and they routinely hold evacuation drills for active shooter simulations. But if a teacher decides to lock down a classroom, there are rocks in a five-gallon bucket kept in every classroom's closet that a student could throw if a shooter gets inside. Still, Helsel says the rocks are seen as a last resort. We have devices installed in our doors that help to secure them, to make it very difficult to break through. Uh, we also have, we train kids and talk about barricading the doors. This teenager is a senior at Blue Mountain High School. He and other students like the plan. It matters because it'll help us protect against the school and stuff. I mean, anything, anything helps. Rocks are better than books and pencils. Parents do as well. At this point, we have to get creative. We have to protect our kids first and foremost. Throwing rocks? It's an option. But not everyone thinks this is a practical line of defense. I think that's rather comical. It's absurd. Arm the teachers. Superintendent says the district has no plans to arm teachers. However, a maintenance employee is trained and certified to work as school security and is armed. And the district plans to have more support staff trained for security. Tonight, the debate continues after President Trump signed a massive spending bill. Some lawmakers say the president should have vetoed the legislation as he had threatened to do. President Trump says he signed the bill for the increases in defense spending, but he was not happy that the plan lacked funding for the border wall. It also failed to address the DACA program for illegal immigrants. Without the legislation, the government would have shut down again at midnight. A